OK, now Robert Pate is a professor of political science at the University of Chicago, and he's the director of the Chicago Project on Security and Threats. And he's joining us live now from Chicago. Robert Pate, thank you very much for being with us uh, on Al Jazeera. You have written, you've studied extensively on the issue of coercive bombing. Uh, what is it, and do you believe that it applies in what we're seeing happening in Gaza at the moment? Uh, yes, um, I've studied every strategic bombing campaign since World War I, um, and we and I've studied them uh, not just in terms of how bombs go on targets, but in terms of the relative intensity of civilian punishment. And what I can tell you is that Israel's uh, bombing campaign is one of the most intense civilian punishment campaigns in history. Already today, uh, after two months, uh, nearly 19,000 civilians have been killed in Gaza. That's about 1% of the 2 million people who live in Gaza. By that standard, 1%, that already puts this uh, bombing campaign in the top 1%, top 25% of all bombing campaigns in history in terms of civilian damage. Uh, and so what we are seeing today is not just simply a, um, a absolute humanitarian catastrophe occurring. We are seeing one of the most intense civilian bombing campaigns in history. And the coercive element. I mean, I, I saw something you wrote earlier in the week uh, about the history of attempts to get people to switch sides by bombing them, both uh, in Britain, uh, the Britons, the, the British uh, Royal Air Force doing it to the Germans, unsuccessful in, in both instances. Are you saying that there is an attempt to do that here as well, that the Israelis want uh, people to give up support for Hamas? Well, we don't actually have the inside documents on exactly what the thinking of the Israeli leaders are at the moment. Uh, however, what we do know is throughout history, when we have seen these levels of intense civilian bombing campaigns, leaders have routinely thought that this would lead to a shattering of the civilian morale in favor of the enemy, or it would lead to a uprising that would topple the enemy government. Uh, and this has never panned out in history, uh, but it doesn't stop the attacker from holding out hope that this, um, these intense civilian bombing campaigns will reach a point where you break the back of civilian support for the enemy. And what we're seeing here, just in the, again, the last several months, is actually the opposite of that hope. Uh, we are seeing the normal coercive failure of civ intense civilian bombing because that civilian bombing is not leading to a loss of support for Hamas inside of the Palestinian people. Uh, but we now know that support for Hamas has tripled from 25 percent of Palestinians before um, uh, October 7th to now today 75 percent of Palestinians support Hamas. And this is unfortunately increasing support for the terrorist group, not diminishing it, and basically is a counterproductive outcome of this massive effort against civilians. And where does such a campaign stand in terms of the laws of war? Uh, I mean, is coercive bombing uh, something that, as you say, we saw in World War II and in other conflicts? Does it in any way uh, align with, with any laws of war? Well, the attackers always claim, whether it was Americans or the British bombing German cities in World War II or the Israelis today, that they have uh, rules, like they drop leaflets to try to warn the civilians to, uh, to run away. But in fact, after the conflicts, history does not remember these as highly selective. What it remembers these bombing campaigns as is indiscriminate. And in this particular case, uh, what Israel is doing is arguing that so long as they can find any reason whatsoever, the existence of a Hamas fighter,
uh, Hamas leader, then that, in their mind, seems to justify virtually infinite amounts of damage on the uh, Palestinian population because they're dropping bombs that might try to kill one Hamas fighter that pancake entire buildings or entire neighborhoods, uh, killing hundreds in the process of trying to attack one fighter. Well, this is something that um, uh, the American Air Forces and even the Israeli Air Forces up until now, uh, they have been very, very, very loath to do because this is the very definition of disproportionate, uh, indiscriminate bombing, which is why President Biden himself is calling this indiscriminate bombing. Indeed. Robert Pape from Chicago, thank you very much for joining us.